talk about Kanye West is not happy with Kim Kardashian because she dresses too sexy. I know, super funny, isn't it? <laughs> Kanye lost the plot, man. Kanye lost the plot. I'm a big fan of his. I've got, you know, I listen to most of his music, if not all of his music. I've I even listened to the previous fucking album that was complete dog shit. Um, but you know, it's quite autobiographical. Autobiographical. It seemed like uh, he turned a new leaf and he was heading in a new direction. Then he went on all that Trump shit, which again I don't have a problem with. I don't care about my artist political leanings. I think it's you know your the artists are fair. Artists are allowed to go whichever way they want to go in life, even musically, even with their way they view the world. I'm not. I'm okay with it. I just think it's up to us as fans to decide whether or not we want to carry on their journey. But we don't. We shouldn't dictate whether or not they should do the thing. They're allowed to grow. Allowed to get older. Do your thing. No problem. But it's just a. Uh, uh, it's just the lack of care and attention he took when he came out saying the things that he said. He didn't take any consideration of just how sensitive the, the subject was in America. He didn't really seem like he read up on anything. He didn't seem like he was knowledgeable of the facts. He was just, you know, that thing that someone does. I remember someone accusing a, a former friend of mine who I don't really speak to anymore. But someone I remember mentioned something to this former friend um, that was quite, that was like, wow, that that must have stung. That former friend was going through like a bit of an awakening, a bit of a, you know, a bit of some self-help stuff, some motivation, some direction in that person's life. And their friends basically said, oh, I don't know what you're, basically they'll go, you know, when, you, when you're, when you first stumble upon Tony Robbins or you first stumble upon Tim Ferriss or I don't know, whoever your touch, whoever your guy is or girl is that kind of gets you um, to like try and maybe expect more from your life or to demand more and to kind of go on this kind of self um, actualization route. There is a period in time where you kind of get a bit preachy and you start telling your friends about them, how they should start their side business and side hustle and how they should optimize their social media and how they should sleep earlier and drink MCT oil and bud coffee, you know, and all that stuff, right? And it gets annoying if, if, if that's your friend because essentially you're all right just living your regular nine to five life, pick up your check at the end of the month, going on a couple of holidays and jamming. You don't need someone to tell you to do all these extra entrepreneurial things because it's not something that you want to do, right? It's, it's something... Usually, most callings in life are callings because they they're things that you can't you can't imagine not doing, right? If you don't do them, you you'd rather die, right? It's that kind of idea. Like that's a calling. You want to play an instrument, be an artist, do this occupation. It's something that you feel really passionate about. So when some of your friends decide to kind of go on this self help or self discovery path, and they suddenly start telling you about how you should change your life, it kind of be like, shut the fuck up, man. Like, yeah, I mean, we were just out in fucking Dawson the other day. Do you know what I mean getting fucked up on shitty drugs? And hanging out and talking shit to random people and now all of a sudden you want me to go and i don't know practice muay thai in the morning because you suddenly become you suddenly decide you want to become the world champion it's like no leave me alone and um, that tends to happen quite often but um that journey is you know it's a personal journey you do it on your own you you know you, you carry on and everything goes okay but i knew kind was losing the plot when he started to do this whole personal journey thing and then started to be a little bit preachy. And uh, this is a good example of it. This this conversation with Kim, even though it's a, you know, it's a marriage thing, it's a standard conversation debate you'd have with your partner, it's not that big of an issue. It is probably a good indication of just where he is now in his spiritual journey. And maybe, maybe in the future, he will become a little bit more reserved and he will just let his actions speak louder than his words and he won't be that annoying guy at the dinner table telling you about how Jesus Christ's salvation saved him. And I'm only saying this, right, from the point of view of someone that's actually been to a church i was going to a church three times a week sometimes four times a week in the summer between the ages of like i don't know was it 12 or maybe 11 11 to maybe like what 23 22 i was going to church every single week right KCC, kingsway international commission kingsway international christian center one of the biggest churches in the uk maybe at the time the biggest church in the uk um used to be around hackney um the where the, where the olympic park is right so that whole area for me now is a complete mind fuck because I remember going there and that used to be where our church was, right? And the market would be there. There'd be a dog tracks there, like just a f nutty place, a, the big bus um, center station thing, garage. So I'm used to, I'm used to the hypocrisy of church people. And that's the reason why I stopped, I stepped, stopped going, right? This idea that somehow your salvation was only going to come through this, come through you follow the actions of this man that was, you know, no, no different to you. There was no difference between you and this guy on stage, but somehow he had the divine word and a divine message to tell you in order for you to get to the next level kind of a little bit scientology uh, but not really of course we're not going to disparage christianity in that regard but you know it was a little bit like what the fuck like why do i have to go through you to get to the next stage why can't i just like cut you out cut the middle man out and go right to the uh, and go right to the source and then i kind of started questioning my faith some 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 madness happened in our family and inside the church that we were in I went my own way. My dad went his way. He started going to other churches. My parents went to other churches. And now my parents go to church mostly. My brothers don't, but I don't go at all. 
But there was a period of time where I was like, really questioning my faith. I was like, what the fuck? I wasted all this time going to church. Just really getting a bit, you know, kind of leaning into the atheist lane. But what kind of actually restored my faith and restored my Christianity to some respect is that I went to a Catholic sixth form, right? St. Bonaventure sixth form. I didn't go there for secondary school. I went there for sixth form only. So I was an external student. So a bit tough to get acclimatized there. Most of the people that went to that school were from the area. Um, I will see other school that's near there. But anyway, most people were from the area, were well known in the area, blah, blah, blah. So it was quite hard to kind of get adjusted there. Finally got adjusted in the first kind of church a Catholic church session we went to was there. My first time I've ever been to Catholic church was through St. Bonaventures. And we went during, I think it was Easter, where they put the chalk on your head. Is that the chalk? I think with the charcoal. I don't know what time meant to symbolize. I think it might be Easter, right? Resurrection. So we went there for that. And that's when I realized that, oh, whatever they're doing in black Christian Baptist churches or evangelical churches isn't what I isn't the doesn't represent what christianity is overall right christianity is, has different facets of course don't get me wrong i'm not that ignorant but the approach that they had in a christian in a black um, evangelical church was completely uh, um, devoid of any for me genuine um quest for spirituality spiritual awakening um i don't know rip forgiveness um enlightenment it was devoid of all of that it just seemed like a transaction you were going there especially during the igoc and stuff you get preachers coming in and telling you you gotta buy this book in order to become a millionaire or buy this book and this will get you a new business buy this book and all this prosperity message that was just fucking complete garbage and just preyed on um um preyed on people that were going through bad times that were maybe in financial strains or family strain especially african families too there's loads of there's loads of there's very rarely you'll find an african family that doesn't have some kind of chaotic really crazy mad family drama that's to do with money that's to do with weird shit i guess every family has it but there's a very weird relationship with like money faith fucking black magic and juju and all that shit there's always something going on funny so a lot of black people think a lot of black people seek salvation through those places because life the realities of day-to-day life are so fucking hard that's why i said something that's why i said so i stupid for my parents still going to church and i don't really take a piss out of it because their life has been so difficult what they've had to go through their family their families the fa- friends of friends like it's just been so even just to get adjusted into the country like come into england right i don't know when when they came what was it the early 90s or early late 80s like it's just fucking difficult man like there wasn't that much unity in the black communities, right? You're getting flipping Caribbean people like throwing shit at you and stuff and you're getting chased out of your own community by EDL and BMP guys and shit. It's just a weird time to be in England. So imagine coming here with no English and trying to adjust. It's just a weird thing. So I get Christianity kind of saving in that regard. Anyway, went to this Catholic church, had a good time and I, and I saw what an actual service was meant to be. The preacher in the, or the, the pastor or whatever, how, how, what do you call them? You call them a preacher, a pastor? I don't know. Um, that was doing a sermon in the Catholic church. It was just, you know, 40 minutes max. The service was maybe an hour. We're in and out. Nice, wholesome message. Made you reflect on a week. It made you, um, it, it kind of like took you out of yourself. It made you kind of appreciate your your position in the world and how insignificant, but significant you were. The place, the, the place that you played in the whole world, how you could be of service to others. It just felt really encouraged. I felt, wow, I felt relieved. And I didn't have to like, giving any money i didn't have to stand up and jump and shout and do some fucking dance and shit just had all i had to do was just you know be attentive and listen to this person talk on stage that was it and i went away feeling oh wow this is what christianity is meant to be about but then when i see kanye west doing this sort of stuff with kim i think to myself this is not the christianity that i am aware of right suddenly now the wife that you married who you know it's kim kardashian he's not marrying i don't know he's not marrying one of these um modest um, fashion youtubers right he's not marrying one of those kind of girls who have a very particular or a very specific point of view a very particular particular specific way of looking at the world so if you if that girl that you married on youtube who's a modest fashion girl and has a hijab and suddenly it becomes you know black china overnight after marrying you because she's got the money and access fair enough you've got a, a reason as a husband to kind of behave hey what the fuck's going on like i didn't marry for this why have you changed this person but it's kim kardashian her essentially her whole image her whole empire has been built on her sex appeal she's kind of segued it in now into law degree and all that sort of stuff and you know um a lot of uh, prison reform stuff but for the most part that's her whole appeal sex appeal you've got with her because she's sexy that's the whole thing you've got with her right so so then suddenly now turn around and say this is kind of making me uncomfortable it sparks it's for me it kind of reeks of a preacher sitting him down and saying something or putting something in his head i think so in my in my opinion i'm not sure what you guys think but it feels as if like this is something a preacher would say to you and then you would kind of be like yeah you know what my wife is dressing a bit slightly at the moment it's like bro it's your wife man 
stand up for her. You know what I mean? So here's a, here's a video of, her, of him saying it, but it just made me think like this guy's on a this. I don't know. Again, I'm happy to wear the shoes. I'm happy to go to the concerts, but anything else to do with Kanye? You know, I mean, general. You know, when it comes to points of view and stuff outside of music and outside of anything creative. I can pass on it, but this is just so many lulls and the hypocrisy. This is just amazing. So here's the video from the shade room. I'll just play it now for you guys. You can hear it from the audio. I think if you guys listening via the podcast app, hopefully hear it loads. Come on, there you go. Give me really bad anxiety. What are you? What are you talking? About? Why is that giving you anxiety to say that? Because you knew last night I was having really bad anxiety, and I don't need any more negative energy for you to now say that you're not into me wearing a tank dress. You track. are. So, when I, when I first saw his video, right? When I first saw his video, I was actually criticizing Kim. I was like, what the fuck, guys? Kim girls for annoying. Because I only saw the bit where it says, you're giving me so much anxiety now. And obviously, you know, we've all heard that phrase from from girls. I think Chris Lee has a really good bit about it. Where he goes, oh my God, I've been, I've been just, I've been running around. I'm just so tired. I've been all day just running around, right? It's just like that crazy thing. It's like, what are you running around? It's like when you watch YouTubers especially girl youtubers that are the hot girls that have like oh day in my life and like oh i get up in the morning answering emails it's like they make it sound as if like they're you know they're digging a ditch in the, in the street or something but um you hear that phrase it's like oh my god you give me anxiety like oh come on get over yourself anxiety but then you watch the video you're like yeah it is anxiety you're going to the met gala right kim Kardashian has had a very um fraught relationship with the met gala with fashion in general right it's only in the last few years she's suddenly been accepted into kind of the fashion circle which is you know annoying to say the least because you know the people in the fashion circles for the most part are just you know bench players trying to pretend like they're a-star players she's the one that's been actually dedicating and pushing things in fashion but these fashion industry people are like kind of poo-pooing her making her seem that like she's not of the culture or doesn't know anything about this it's just annoying you know right and she probably buys more fashion than any of these editors that talk about her in a disparaging way she suddenly gets accepted into it. So she's very aware in the same regard as like, I think Virgil mentioned it when he did his Nike collaboration that he was very aware that um, the amount of people that are out there that don't really like him or don't really like the way his career has kind of panned out, how successful he's become over a relative short period of time. They're kind of waiting for him to fail. So, and obviously sneakerheads are the most, you know, I don't know, the most opinionated fans out there for the most part. So if he shoot, if his collection would have been trash, he would have not heard the end of it. And I think he was very aware of how much damage that could have done to his overall, not say brand, but maybe reputation, maybe immediately. It might have, but he was very aware of how much it could it could hurt him. So he went to make sure he hit at the park. And obviously the Nike 10 collaboration with Virgil was sick. And I think Kim is very aware of that too. She knows that she's only one out, one bout bad outfit away from being cast away as like oh yeah see she's just a valley girl doesn't know nothing about fashion she's only one even though she dedicated her whole life to fucking image creation and fashion and um consumerism and materialistic lifestyle right she dedicated her whole life to that right she's basically an expert a world-class player in kind of you know making sure you look really good on social media i've seen some pictures you see pictures of them online sometimes you're like surely they can't look at this in real life and then you meet someone that actually meet them in real life and they're like yeah they do look at that in real life <laughs> and then you see a video shoot of her came in like no makeup for like vogue turkey or something you're like ah okay cool there's different levels we're just made different you know you look at someone like brock lesnar you're like oh brock lesnar's not like me kim is not like me you know they're both in the different realms but i saw a video first i was like oh my gosh she's comparing about nothing and i see i'm like you know what actually make cars a lot of pressure then you got your husband sitting across from you telling you suddenly now after he suddenly decided that he's a christian because oh he looks in the mirror oh shit i'm black what's the best way i can recover from this scandal christianity he's now suddenly trying to tell you that you should be dressing up modestly that's like what <laughs> imagine king kardashian modest like what the fuck would that i'm sure she'd probably kill it still but come on my wife and it affects me when pictures are too sexy you built me up to have be this like sexy person and confidence and all this stuff yeah. and just because you're on a journey and you're on your transformation doesn't mean that i'm in the right i'm in the same spot with you thank god you said that right he's like you're my i'm your husband even maybe so thank god she said that that was a brave to be honest with her to say that too because i assume in that position especially with kanye on his spiritual journey you can feel a little bit let's say guilt you can get guilt tripped into doing things you don't want to do and I'd imagine being in a relationship or in a relationship or being in a marriage is a whole different level. There is a part of you that's like, you know, you're a team now, you become a family, you join names, you've you know, you've swapped flipping DNA and created a human, right? It's like it's a different level of like um cooperation or collaboration. Sometimes you wanna maybe it's like, you know, you hear stories a lot about especially um uh, parents, maybe our generation of parents, parents that were born maybe in the sixties, fifties, forties, you know, there is stories of like, you know, the your dad or your mum 
putting their career or their their dreams to one side in order to kind of raise a family, right? It's just a standard thing they have to do. They have to just look in the mirror and say, look, I can't be a drummer. I can't go into on tour with this band. I can't be an artist or a poet. I can't go and pursue a law degree because I have a child. I have to feed it. So I'm just going to go and work in the supermarket, work my way up and, you know, keep it moving. So there is maybe that pressure even nowadays, even though, you know, um, the marital um, balances for the most part, especially in rich and, rich and successful people is a bit more even, um, especially nowadays. You'd think that, you know, but there's still that pressure maybe to be a little bit like, you know what, maybe he's right, you know, especially with some people in the comments, you know, she's, there's a common thing that people retort back at Kim is like when she posts naked, oh, you got kids, you got kids, you got kids. So maybe it could play in your mind. So for her to say that to someone that she actually loves and say, no, look, I respect your lane, but don't now impede on mine is a good response but also it goes to show just how much full of shit i think kanye is at the moment i think he's saying the kind of things i had heard in church people you know were speaking upon like if they some person went on a, f- a fucking 17 day fast and they suddenly got a new job they would be going t- around and telling everyone that would listen that they should go on a 17 day fast too not knowing that number one that might have been their journey if you believe in Christ or you believe in any sort of spiritual salvation, that might have been their journey that was set out for them. Number two, it might just be a coincidence that they happened to go on a seven-day fucking um, fast or hunger strike and suddenly their dreams became true. You know what I mean? But they're, they're equating two things as a, as a reason why they got the other thing when really they could be completely separate issues. And then they're trying to then tell you to do the same thing too. It's like, no, that works for you now, but also it's a journey. It's a, the, the, the word to it is a journey. If your journey is now, my journey might be later. It's not something you need to do right away. And it's like, it's like I, I get, it's probably the same feeling people get when everyone's talking about Game of Thrones, right? Remember? Oh, Game of Thrones, watch this, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad. You watch the way you have watched Breaking Bad. Yo, you're an idiot. And he's like, no, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to watch it now, right? I'm not going to have you guys forcing me into watching something just because now suddenly, what? I'm not a cultured or I'm not a enlightened person because I haven't watched this fucking TV series. So you don't have a reaction of like, you know what? I'm not going to watch it. Maybe the same sort of thing Christianity happens too. In my regard, I think that probably happened because, you know, I got forced to go to church every day. All the days that I was, didn't want to go, I got forced to go, right? On a Sunday, you'd be like pretending to sleep in bed and your dad would fucking open all the windows and, you know what I mean, turn on the lights and start playing fucking um, gospel music at max volume and then you'd have to just go in it by force. It's just, oh, hated it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay, all right, so, all right, all right, cool. <laughs> He's such a baby, isn't it? I like it. It's a baby, maybe, but your thing at the end. All right, okay, okay, cool. It's a baby thing, but it's super funny. Mature, maybe mature too in another garbage. <laughs> <laughs> when the argument, he just bopped out like a child. Okay, all right, cool. Let me hear that play again, please. Please, let me hear that play again. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Give me really bad anxiety. What are, you, what are you talking about? Why is that giving you anxiety to say that? Because you knew last night I was having really bad anxiety and I don't need anyone negative energy for you to now say that you're not into me wearing a tight you dress. You are my wife. You are my and it affects me. Just trying to get most of that. You are my wife. You built me up to have, be this like sexy person and confidence and all this stuff. Yeah. And just because you're on a journey and you're on your transformation doesn't mean that I'm in the right, I'm in the same spot with you. No. Okay, all right, so, all right, all right, cool. <laughs> that will never get old. All right, okay, all right, cool. Oh, oh, Kanye is a legend. Even in these moments when he don't meant to like him, he still provides you with absolute low moments, man. I fucking love the guy, I can't help it, I'm sorry. He's Al Morrissey, I keep telling people, he's, he's the hip-hop Morrissey. I don't think hip-hop has had a, a figure like him yet. Or has has had many questionable figures like you know, electronic or quote unquote white music has Moby. You have Morrissey. You have um, Metallica after the whole um, Napster thing. What else you have? You have maybe James Murphy, LCD, LCD Sanders, and people that like him. He's a bit of a snobbing up his ass. Like there's people in electronic music or in indie music that people don't necessarily like, right? That they kind of Brian Adams. Um, I don't know, there's personalities, but hip-hop doesn't really have him, right? And this is suddenly we've got one. We've got Kanye West. He is our Morrissey. Like, finally, we've got a, a divisive figure who's a fucking genius on that, on that music board. Absolute genius at making trainers. Genius at making clothes. But when it comes to political views, when it comes to this stuff, nah, man. Oh, absolutely.